Thanks, uh, Keir, look. Um, see, the, good, the Taoiseach and the Tony have lost all interest in the budget. Uh, I suspect the wider public out there probably lost interest anyway because they realise through bitter experience it won't make much difference to the real issues that affect their lives. Um, I'm not going to give go, uh, in a, go through an exhaustive list of what isn't there or what we would have done instead. Uh, people can read our alternative budget submission and uh, I'm sure we'll be debating many of the individual items over the next while and during the election uh, campaign. But uh, I just want to focus on a few things. Um, so the health service. Um, the uh, government uh, w uh, announced yesterday there was going to be three billion additional for the health service, uh, and uh, you know obviously imply that this is going to help uh, improve the quality of the health service. But the lie, uh, in, you know, involved in that, I think, was exposed this morning by the representatives of the INMO and uh, SIP2 of health workers in the health unions. And this is something I've been trying to highlight for the last number of weeks since I got wind of it, uh, as a result of being contacted by health workers in the local hospital, St. Michael's, in what I initially thought was something specific and local, but I, I have now discovered, uh, talking to the unions, hearing from elsewhere, is a much more general deception that the government are engaged in uh, to hide what they are doing in the health service and to give lie to any notion that anything in this budget is, uh, represents any serious attempt to address the crisis in the health service, namely the pay and numbers uh, strategy. Uh, so the government announced during the summer that they're lifting the recruitment embargo, an recruitment embargo that they never admitted existed, but at exactly the same time they imposed that embargo by another name called the pay and numbers strategy. Uh, and what that means, as it was explained in great detail by representatives of the nurses and the midwives uh, organisation this morning and SIP2, is that rather than the government comply with their own commitments uh, under the framework for nursing and midwifery and for safe staffing in our hospitals, uh, they have set a, uh, a staff ceiling on recruitment uh, and posts in the health services, in our hospitals and in the health services. And this, which was set in the summer, uh, was uh, benchmarked against whatever posts happened to be filled in December 2023, uh, and consequently, posts that were not filled in that period were suppressed, literally disappeared. So the INMO say, although they can't get accurate figures from the HSE, because the HSE doesn't want to admit the truth about this, say that 2,000, they estimate, nursing and midwifery posts have simply disappeared, have been suppressed because those posts weren't filled back in 2023 uh, and now they've disappeared. So that rather than the uh, funding allocations of the government being based on what represents safe staffing levels in our hospitals, in all areas, not just nursing and midwifery, but for, for doctors, for caterers, for porters, for support staff, for radiographers, for physiotherapists, and you can go on through the list, uh, they are being based on budgetary limits and staff quotas that are being set on an arbitrary basis by the Department of Public uh, Expenditure and which are leaving our hospitals chronically understaffed and critically uh, failing to meet the requirements for patient safety, for safe staffing levels. 
Okay, and uh, in my hospital, and we have a public meeting in Dunleary tonight, which I was asked to hold by staff in the local hospital, uh, where uh, they are telling me horror stories, basically, about the unsafe staffing levels. The public health nurse who I met at the IN, uh, IMNO uh, briefing last week said that, I think she said 11 public health nurse posts were suppressed because they weren't filled uh, in just our area. Uh, they weren't filled as of December uh, last, uh, last year. And the INMO and SIB2 both believe that this is actually linked to a deliberate agenda to, for privatisation. So we don't fill the posts uh, or we suppress the posts. If that work needs to be done, then it's outsourced to private, uh, private companies. And as Phil Nee Hay pointed out this morning uh, from the INMO, isn't it interesting, you know, when the government says, oh, well, the problem is we can't recruit people, isn't it interesting that the, the private agencies can recruit health uh, uh, staff and nurses and so on who are on lesser paying conditions, but the HSE can't? It's not that they can't, it's that the government won't fund the posts. Uh, and is suppressing the posts uh, and doesn't want to recruit uh, the necessary staff and meet their commitments uh, under uh, the uh, framework for st safe staffing. Uh, they also cited the need for the government or the failure of the government to progress the patient safety licensing bill which would also, uh, if you like, enshrine legally the requirement for safe staffing levels in the health service. Uh, now, what all that means in simple terms, is when we're talking about scoliosis waiting lists, uh, when we're talking about nearly a million people waiting for surgeries, when we're talking about 600 people being on trolleys uh, today, uh, uh, that is going to continue, that crisis is going to continue because we do not simply have the safe levels of staffing, the ratios that are necessary between nurses, midwives, other healthcare professionals, and the number of patients that are being dealt with in the health service. So the misery, uh, uh, the uh, lack of safety and so on for patients will uh, continue our health service. One interesting uh, note though on this is when you actually do something about it and you expose this stuff, all of a sudden, today, I get a letter from the Hospital East group saying, on the day we're having the public meeting, because there's outrage being expressed locally, saying they're planning uh, to now fill 21 new posts uh, in St. Michael's Hospital, which have been left unfilled, leading to chaos and demoralisation in the hospital. Very, very interesting. That shows you, when workers begin and the community begins to actually uh, get up and do something, that's what can actually force a bit of change uh, to, uh, and that's why I'll be fully supporting uh, the protests of Forza, the INMO and SIP2 at hospitals, number of hospitals tomorrow, and I hope they continue to escalate those protests uh, to force the government to actually staff our hospitals and uh, fund our, our health services uh, properly. Uh, the other, in the brief time available to me, I just mentioned the housing uh, situation. I went through this yesterday, but it's really absolutely shocking. Shocking that the Housing Commission can say that the 33,000 houses a year that the government uh, uh, are planning to deliver year on year in the housing for all, they can tell us, which we all knew anyway and the government didn't want to admit, is less than half of what we actually need. We actually need 60, more likely 70,000 houses a year and that in line with that we need to uh, double the amount of social and affordable housing we're, uh, we're going to deliver and yet incredibly with 13 billion from uh, Apple, with a total budget surplus of 23.7 billion euro, a projected surplus of 6 billion euro next year, they haven't changed the planned output of social and affordable housing for next year. It's exactly as the same as it was uh, for this year, a woefully inadequate figure, guaranteeing that the housing misery of those on social housing waiting lists or those looking for affordable housing uh, will continue and uh, of course when you look at the affordable housing that is being delivered in Shankana, lowest price 330,000 ranging up to 30, uh, 390,000 and where we still don't know the cost of the cost rental but where uh, there's figures flying around of 1,300 euro. 
So if you're a single income family, no chance of the affordable housing, no chance of the cost rental. You simply could not afford it, right? Uh, interestingly, the HAP tenancies that you're supporting have dropped by 10,000 this year, and then you say you're going to expand them by another 10,000. Why have they gone down from last year by 10,000? Because of evictions. People being evicted into homelessness uh, by and large. So this budget really is... Uh, a sham in terms of addressing the two biggest crises that are facing this country in housing and health.